Hi, I'm Bill Hogrew with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. Coliform sampling is an important part of monitoring the water quality in all drinking water systems. Collecting a coliform sample properly is critical to protecting public health. Improper sampling is the most common reason for false positive results. And positive results, even false positives, require repeat sampling, which means you have to spend extra time, effort, and money. In this video, we will cover 13 steps to proper coliform sampling and discuss how to find a good sampling site. Assemble the sampling supplies. These include several 125 milliliter sterilized plastic bottles that you get from the lab. The white powder in the bottom of the bottle is a dechlorination agent. Do not rinse out the bottles. The lab will supply a label and any forms that they require. Bring along waterproof pens or markers. Wash your hands thoroughly. If you wear gloves, make sure they are clean. You will need to measure the chlorine residual when you take the coliform sample so bring a chlorine test kit. Go to the sample site or sites in your monitoring plan. The ideal tap should be clean and good repair and free of attachments. It should have separate valves that control the hot and cold water independently. You want to sample only the cold water. Sample indoors when possible. Some sample taps are not ideal. If possible, avoid sampling taps that are outdoors, that have faucets with swivel necks, that have single valves for both hot and cold water. You should also avoid samples from leaky faucets or leaky pipes. Avoid faucets that are threaded on the interior. Upward facing faucets such as drinking fountains should also be avoided. Avoid faucets located in a room of questionable sanitary conditions. And don't take a sample from any site that has household point of entry or point of use devices such as softeners or reverse osmosis. Remove the aerator, strainer, or hose. These attachments can trap sediment and biofilms can form on the inside of hoses. Some samplers disinfect the tap with a solution of one part bleach to ten parts of water or with isopropyl alcohol from a spray bottle. This procedure is not absolutely necessary. Open the cold water tap for two to three minutes or until water from the main reaches the tap. You can gauge this by when the water temperature stabilizes. Another good indicator is when you have the same chlorine residual at the tap as what you expect to find in the main. So now is a good time to take the chlorine residual sample. Do not take a coliform sample if you do not have a measurable chlorine residual. Fill out the label in all other forms. Be careful to use waterproof ink and write clearly. Adjust the flow from the tap to the width of a pencil. You want a steady, controlled flow that will not wash the dechlorination powder from the sample bottle or splash water from the sink into the bottle. Don't change the flow once you start sampling because this could dislodge microbial growth from the plumbing. Remove the bottle cap. Be careful not to touch the inside of the bottle or the bottle cap. Do not lay the cap down or put it in your pocket. The only thing that should go into the sample bottle is the water sample from the main. Fill the sample bottle to the shoulder approximately one quarter inch from the top. Some bottles have a line at the proper level. Do not rinse the bottle. Place the cap on the bottle and screw it down tightly. Turn the tap off and replace the aerator, strainer, or hose. Check the information on the label. Check the information on the lab forms. Be sure that it is legible and correct. Ice and send the sample to the lab so the analysis can begin within 30 hours. Refrigeration is recommended. You can use a cooler with an ice pack. The quicker it gets to the lab, the better. Be sure that you are using a certified laboratory for your analysis. Here are some helpful hints for sampling to keep in mind. Sample early in the week and the month or the compliance period. That way, if you have to resample, you'll have time to do so. If you feel something went wrong, throw the sample out and take another sample. 
Sample bottles are cheap, but false positives are not. For more information about coliform sampling and other topics, visit our website at rcap.org. The Rural Community Assistance Partnership is a national network of nonprofit organizations working to ensure that small and rural communities have access to safe drinking water and sanitary wastewater disposal. If you need help with your water or wastewater system, contact your local RCAP office.